everyone, my name is Cynthia and I am a UX design student. Currently, I am working on my first UX design project, which is creating a financial application from scratch. So if you've watched any of my previous videos, I have been sharing my journey on how I'm creating this application. And in today's video, what I will be sharing is how I created my sitemaps for the financial application. So what is a sitemap? A sitemap, just like it says in the name, is the map that outlines how the application is organized. It also outlines the hierarchy of each individual page. In my opinion, sitemaps and information architecture are extremely important when designing an application. Think about going into a library where there are tons of books, and you know that the book that you are looking for is somewhere in there, but you're unable to find it because they don't have it any way that they can tell you what part of the library it's in. That would become extremely frustrating and it would be really difficult to find the information that you're looking for. So by creating sitemaps and focusing on information architecture, it allows users to be able to navigate the app and this really makes the app usable. The key difference between user flows and sitemaps is that user flows focuses on the specific task that a user is trying to complete. With sitemaps, we're looking at the bigger picture and not so much about those specific details of each page. To create my sitemap, I first conducted a closed card sorting. To conduct my card sorting, I used a website called Optimal Workshop, and I just sent out the link to a total of 10 participants to learn how they group specific categories. Because my card sorting was a closed card sorting, some of the categories that I included in the research were credit monitoring, profile settings, accounts, educational resources, coupons, additional resources, and homepage. Within the card sort, I also had a total of 20 terms. So what my participants had to do was to group those terms with the categories that I provided. The results that I got from this card sort were really great because a lot of my participants were thinking the same way and they ended up grouping a lot of those terms with the categories provided. On average, 80 to 90% of my participants linked the terms and the categories in the same group. A few of the outliers were the terms asset aggregation and statements. With statements, 10% of my participants believed that that should be categorized with additional resources. 40% believed that it should be within the profile settings tab and 50% believed that it should be under accounts. The next one was asset aggregation, and this one was scattered a little bit more than the coupons one, which made me feel like I maybe needed to use a different term. Because the users that I'm focusing on for this financial application are mostly Gen Z and millennials, they tend to be on the younger side. So I thought that maybe asset aggregation is not a very commonly used term and it was causing a little bit more confusion. So for asset aggregation, what I decided to do was a little bit more research. So I took a step back and I did another competitive analysis on applications that have features like this. After doing my competitive analysis, I learned that the more commonly used verbiage was add external accounts instead of asset aggregation. So I did a second run for the card sorting and I tested this just on a handful of people. Instead of using the word asset aggregation, I used add external accounts and this gave me a lot better results because most of my participants ended up grouping the term into the same category, which was accounts. So what this means is that my users believe that to add external accounts, they would find that feature under the accounts page. After conducting my first round of card sorting, doing some competitive research and going back to a second round of card sorting, I felt confident that I had a good sense of how my potential users believe that the website or application should be structured. So I started illustrating my sitemap using Figma. A quick tip that I have on creating sitemaps is make sure that you always number each page. 
Here I have my splash screen, which is 1.0, then my login page 1.2, and my home screen is 1.3. It just makes things a lot easier when trying to work with colleagues over email, phone call, or even if you're presenting your sitemap, it will make it easier for others to locate the page that you are referring to. This is all I have for today's video. I hope that this was informational and helpful. And I also hope that you guys are enjoying these types of videos. I'm personally really enjoying making these because it helps me talk about the process and just get in the habit of explaining my design process as well as sharing my project that I'm working on. Um, if you guys have any comments, any feedback, or just want to talk about what techniques you guys use when creating your sitemaps, please drop them below. I would love to hear any feedback or comments that you guys have. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you guys have a great day.